Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before I jump into things, in the video description below, this is where you can find links to other social networks that I'm involved with, Facebook in particular, Twitter as well. Um, also, any references that I make in terms of the videos, they'll always be in there. And more importantly, uh, subscribe, like, share, and engage in the conversation. This is why I'm doing this, is to engage with you, to talk, to discuss. If you have differences of opinion, that's fine. My only rule is be polite. If you come in and start making statements or whatever, I have no problem blocking, deleting, banning. You know, I'm looking for civil discussion, not ignorance. And if you're going to be ignorant and blatant ignorance, then I'll just get rid of it. So, you know, get involved and we'll see where we can go with this, inshallah. Now, in the case of uh, a particular situation is, do I need to obey my abusive parent? I found repeatedly when I get online, and I'm not sure why this particular one is, I'm, people are getting better at it, but there was very little in ways of practical advice. And I also found, is, found that there's a lot of articles out there, and I'm sure there's good ones out there, and maybe I just haven't seen it, but you can only read so much. Uh, but there was this angle about a focus on the obedience to parents. And this is a very important foundation, a hukum in, in Islam, about being obedient to parents. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly associates himself with parents. And this is not association in terms of worship and shirk. This is an association meaning that he does this when he wants to elevate somebody, meaning a status. So he does it with the prophets and messengers, for example, to say that, look, these are my prophets and messengers. I've given them authority. In terms of parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them authority to raise us, to be responsible for us. But the mistake that we make is that we don't understand and we don't take the time and energy to look into situations or look into the definitions of the words. So unfortunately, people think obedience is subservience, meaning that mom and dad say jump and you say how high. That is not how it works, folks. we got to get over this. this. Islam does not teach this. That is not obedience. The only person, or sorry, Allah forgive me, the only individual that we are subservient to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone else, technically, you are equal to your parents. Right? However, you have, we have certain rules and guidelines and how we deal with our parents. And that's where the real problem comes in. We don't think, we're not thinking outside the box. We're not learning the Quran. We're not learning the Sunnah. We take a few little ayah and a few little narrations and we think this is enough. And this is where the problem comes in. When you study Quran and you study the Sunnah, things just start to open up, folks. You know, I'm, I'm telling you seriously, when you start to, like, it's, it will change your life because if you understand that there's these little little details that are intended to open up this huge door to, to really give us, you know, a, a new direction. <clears throat> and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this. So in terms of parents, yes, they are in charge. They are the ones that sacrifice and do certain things. So as children, our job is to recognize that they have made sacrifices and that we didn't make it easy on them. We have done things to them. It's more difficult when you're younger, but when you get to be a little bit older, you recognize how much of the problems and stress and anxiety are on my parents are because of me. How much have I put them through? So we need to recognize this because one day, inshallah, we will be parents and guess what happens to us? Smack down because our children are all, you know, one of the worst curses a parent could make is that I hope you have children that are just like you. <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, it's okay. And then, and then you grow up and my mom is telling me now that my son is, man, he's just like you. And I said, no, I'm not like that. No. Here I'm a grown man crying like this, <laughs> but that's what happens. So anyway, now as I said, it's a relationship. The successful relationship, parent-child relationship, is that the children are brought up in a way to recognize that they have certain rights, but they also have certain responsibilities. Parents have to recognize they have rights, but they also have responsibilities. Your job as a father is to take care of your family. The mother, her job is to take care of her family. Husband takes care of his wife, wife takes care of the husband, right? It all is it's intertwined. Now, in terms of Something that's far more important that we seem to forget about is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says being unjust is even more of a priority for us than obedience to parents. And we forget this and we don't talk about this. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, the or read the tafsir, the explanation, the translation of the meaning um, of the Quran. And... Uh, yeah, so, Bismillah, O you who have believed, be persistently standing firm in justice, witnesses for Allah, even if it against yourself, your parents, or your relatives. Whether one is rich or poor, Allah is most worthy of both. 
So follow not personal inclination, lest you be unjust, and if you distort your testimony, meaning to lie, or if you refuse to give it, meaning you're asked about, hey, did you witness something, and you say no, but it's not true, I don't want to tell you, that's, right, then indeed Allah is ever acquainted with what you do. This means that that ruling of being, you see injustice, even if it's your parents, you have to, that priority comes over the obedience to your parents. So if your parents says, don't tell anybody, it's wrong, or they ask you to get involved with something, they're asking you to do something, then you say, you know what, dad, I can't do it. Dad asks you to go to get some, some cigarettes or some, go get me some alcohol or buy me one of those magazines or give me a lottery ticket. Dad, you know what, sorry, you want to engage in that kind of stuff, you do it on your own. But if you do it, I'm not going to do it for you, dad, sorry. Now, and that's the key. That's what it really comes down to. Now, if your parents call you and say, you know what, son, we haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Your mom hasn't been feeling well. She wants you to come visit. And I'd like to see you too. You know, we've got some things to talk about. Can you come over? We'd like you to come over this Saturday. Now, if you say, oh, dad, I'm working Friday or I have an exam on Monday. I'll be honest, these are not good excuses. You know, you can still take a couple hours out of your day, take a break. It's actually better for you to get out, take a break, go visit them, and spend time with them. And if you don't, you're, that's just, this is where you're falling into that disobedience, right? Uh, I'm just giving a simple example because I'm trying to make it a more practical example. But, but that's where the obedience comes in. When your dad says, come on, son, I need you to help me. we got to move some stuff. You, I don't feel like it. I'm playing my video games. Dad, that's disobedience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even warns about that. He says, if, if you give them attitude and you, <laughs> whatever, you give them this, that is where things become a problem. And that's disobedience. And those are the things that are going to get you in trouble. So, but if you're in an abusive situation where you're becoming depressed and sad and you just don't want to be in the environment, then you got to get out of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forbid us from having good adab and good manners, and that's the key. If you're in the situation, explain to them. Set ground rules. Dad, I don't want to talk politics. I don't want to talk religion, because let's say these are things that he's passionate about and he gets very angry about. Then you say, Dad, I, don't, I want to come visit, but I don't want to talk about these things. And Dad, if you're going to talk about these things, I have to leave, right? Or Mom. Generally, you don't see that so much with Mom. It tends to be men that are more aggressive with these types of things, but... Uh, but you know what I'm saying? So that you be creative. And this is not disobedience to Allah. Cutting the ties, saying, I'm never going to talk to you again. I don't want to call you again. Now this is not allowed. But to take a break and you're in a situation, Dad, i got to go. I can't. You know, you call, you know, start calling them on the phone. Get a sense. Try to establish a relationship again. Talk to them. Get things going again. Because it's a safety net too. Right? Because Dad, you know, oh, hey, I, sorry, i got to go. And you hang up. Right? And uh, that way, and then you try again the next day and you talk, say, hey, just call for five minutes, see how your day was. You know, oh, cool, okay, I gotta go, I got I got about five minutes, Dad, I gotta go to pray, I gotta click, right? That's what you do, right? And be creative. This is how you deal with it. And this is not disobedience, this is actually the way we're supposed to behave. And we just have to be, as children, find ways to, to get out of the situation, to change the environment, to, to approach it from new directions while maintaining that relationship. Even if they are extreme and they are extremely hurtful, then just don't visit them. Send them a letter. Honestly, if you want to maintain, hey dad, how are you? I love you. I miss you. Just writing you a letter. Send them an email. You don't have to physically be in their present presence, especially if they are being extremely harmful to you, right? Now, so as I said, don't, don't look at these things black and white. Try to be more open. Try to see the, the bigger picture. And uh, inshallah, things will get a lot easier if you approach it this way. Um, maintaining the ties of kinship just means you just, you're there when they need you. Uh, but when they're crossing the line, you don't have to take it. Just be good about how you deal with the situation. Proper adab, good behaviors and manners, and you'll be good, inshallah. So as I said before, subscribe, like, share, and if you have any questions, put them in the, down in the comments below, and inshallah I'll try to make a, a video uh, based on, on you know, suggestions of how you can survive Islam, right? <laughs>